Hey, what's happening guys? Today, um, we're going to talk a little bit about oscilloscopes. Not the big kind. Not $25,000 Tektronics, MDO, this, that, and the other. And not the $20 build-it-yourself kit. Because while this will show you very slow waveforms, that's really about all it's good for. And, uh, yeah. Now, you guys have seen me use this in past videos. This is the Handtech 6022BE. It's a dual-channel USB oscilloscope, which means, you know, you plug it into your computer. And if you're in the market for a scope, and you don't want to spend the $200 to $500 for a desktop uh, DSO, and you're looking for more than this, this guy clocks in somewhere around $50 to $60, depending on the day of the week. And like I said, I've used this in previous videos. I did a review on it last January, which I'll link to down below. Today, let's take it apart. See what's inside. See what makes it tick and what makes it such a cool little scope. Now, just before we get inside, like I said, it is a two-channel. Uh, 20 megahertz scope and it is USB based. It comes with everything you need including the software and to be perfectly honest the software is not great but it's not bad and there are alternatives out there and I'll link to them too. So this is a aluminum case and it's got these hard plastic uh, rubber baby buggy bumpers on the sides. So let's get them off and get inside here and take a look. And once we get inside to look at some teeny tiny things, we're going to break out the must tool uh, digital microscope once again. All right, let's get to disassembly. Okay, so you pop off the rubber baby buggy bumpers and you're just going to find four Phillips head screws. All right, now that she's naked, we can see what's going on here. Now, first of all, notice... Um, this spring here and this spring here along with the gold pads at the top and at the bottom of the case those are for grounding the board to the case excellent grounding going on here now this is the two channel version they also make a four channel version and I believe that's probably what these unpopulated headers here are for and this one here is for an extra BNC connector for an external trigger, which is another option for, you know, an upgraded version of this. So if we look at the front end here, channel one and channel two, you can see we come in and we've got a trimmer cap on each one. And then we go through a bunch of passives until we get to our first little uh, chip here, three pin and we're going to break out the microscope and take a look at what those guys are. Then we have a relay here. Our ADC is under this heat sink. And this big old chip here, the CY7C68013A. This is a chip called the Easy USB, and it's a combination USB 2.0 controller and an 8051 microprocessor so I mean obviously that's the brains of the operation then we have a 20 uh, yeah, 24 megahertz crystal and we have our USB out and then we also have this jack here which is probably for another version or an optional logic analyzer that you can get you also see here the AMS 1117 which is a 3.3 volt voltage regulator and then up here at the front we have our signal generator connection this produces a one kilohertz square wave so let's uh turn on the microscope and have a close-up look at what some of these other teeny tiny chips are all right so we're starting out here again with our front end and we come in and you can see that trimmer cap and below it is a small resistor. 
And then there's some more resistors and some capacitors. 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 Oh, boy. It's going to be one of those days. And all this is just for filtering and shaping our front end. Now, that first uh, transistor, can we, can we get it? Can you guys see what that says? I know it's kind of hard to see. It's an A7, which is a, a P-channel MOSFET. Then we come over here, where there we are. Now I can't even get my. Where are we? There we go. Now this little five-pin guy here. Let's see if I can focus that a little bit better. Nice, very nice. HRA. That is a uh, polyfuse, and that's going to protect against spikes and whatnot. There's another one. And then we get to this big old guy here, the 74HC4051, which is an 8-channel multiplexer. And we swing around down here, we can see a bunch more passives. And there's another unpopulated spot right there. There's a lot of unpopulated stuff going on. I mean, if we look at this uh, quad flat pack here, and then over here, a bunch of other unpopulated items. Let's see if I can find this chip here. Where are we at? Follow the red stick. So this is a 24LC02B1. That guy goes along with the uh, easy USB controller. Then up here we have some more unpopulated stuff. Another bunch of unpopulated stuff here. And finally we get to that card edge connector. So you can see this board is a, a multi-use board. They uh, intended to use it for a lot of things. And I'm not sure exactly how many models they actually produced with this. That microscope is pretty nice, but it uh, it's actually a little too tight for what we're looking for here. So I figured we'd just zoom back out to look at some more of this stuff. Now up here, we have that easy USB controller. And then there's obviously a spot for another one there, another crystal, uh, whatever that 8-pin chip was. And then down here, a spot for another ADC. So basically, you've got, you know, two separate scopes on this single board this is this is some really nice construction and it is a uh, single side I mean it's probably multi-layered but single sided everything is on there we've got two separate grounding points there again plus all the strips on the side of the board we've got a lot of little through vias for cooling very well designed and for fifty dollars like I said if you're looking to get into a scope and you don't want to commit to the big scope or if you don't have room I really think this is an excellent choice. I used it. I like it. It's my backup in case my main scope goes. You know, um, not trying to sell you anything, but if you're looking for a scope, that's probably a pretty good one to get into. Again, for the price, $50 to $60. I'll post a link to it down below. Also, a link to this guy, which, you know, all in all is not bad. It's just that the bandwidth is, is so low you're not going to be able to get up into the megahertz of seeing anything and the controls frankly are a little bit clunky fun kit to build though so yeah i'll put a link to that down below and also i'll put a link to my main scope sitting back there the dso 5072p because hey if you're into electronics who doesn't like oscilloscopes right right anyway guys that's it for today Really hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share. Don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all my patrons. If you're not a patron, please go to the patrons, Patreon site and consider pledging at least a buck a month to keep this channel alive. You know, with the changes YouTube has made over the past year, creators like me who, you know, just have a few thousand, I'm at like 8,900 right now, are hardly making any money. Plus, the demonetization bot hits you every other video you post. 
And what they do is they demonetize your video for the first two days that it's up. Then it automatically gets remonetized, but you've lost any revenue you make off of that. So the Patreon helps out a lot. And again, thank each and every one of you who have pledged for it. And even if you haven't pledged for it, thank you for watching, commenting, subscribing, and making this little tiny electronics channel grow so fast in the you know year and a couple months it's been open. I appreciate it, and I appreciate each and every one of you. That's it. I'm out. Peace.